The Oracle Concerning Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos saw. On a bare hill, raise a signal, cry aloud to them. Wave the hand of them to enter the gates of the nobles. I myself have commanded my consecrated ones, have summoned my mighty men to execute my anger, my proudly exulting ones. Listen, a tumult on the mountains as of a great multitude. Listen, an uproar of kingdoms, of nations gathering together. The Lord of hosts is mustering a host for battle. They come from a distant land, from the end of the heavens, the Lord and the weapons of his indignation, to destroy the whole earth. Wail, for the day of the Lord is near, as destruction from the Almighty will come. Therefore all hands will be feeble, and every man's heart will melt, and they will be dismayed. Pangs and agony will seize them. They will be in anguish, like a woman with labor pains. They will look aghast at one another. Their faces will be aflame. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel, with wrath and fierce anger, to make the earth a desolation, and to destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of the heavens and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be dark at its rising, and the moon will not shed its light. I will punish the world for its evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. I will put an end to the pride of the arrogant, and lay low the haughtiness of the ruthless. I will make men more rare than fine gold, and mankind than the gold of Ophir. Therefore I will make the heavens tremble, and the earth will be shaken out of its place, at the wrath of the Lord of hosts, in the day of his fierce anger. And like a hunted gazelle, or like sheep with none to gather them, every man will turn to his own people, and every man will flee to his own land. Whoever is found will be thrust through, and whoever is caught will fall by the sword. Their infants will be dashed in pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be plundered, and their wives ravished. Behold, I am stirring up the Medes against them, who have no regard for silver, and do not delight in gold. Their bows will slaughter the young men. They will have no mercy on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes will not pity children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the splendor and pride of the Chaldeans, will be like Sodom and Gomorrah when God overthrew them. It will never be inhabited or dwelt in for all generations. No Arab will pitch his tent there. No shepherds will make their flocks lie down there. But wild beasts will lie down there and its houses will be full of howling creatures. There ostriches will dwell, and there satyrs will dance. Hyenas will cry in its towers, and jackals in the pleasant palaces. Its time is close at hand, and its days will not be prolonged. The Lord will have compassion on Jacob, and will again choose Israel, and will set them in their own land, and strangers will join them, and will cling to the house of Jacob. And the peoples will take them, and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel will possess them in the Lord's land as male and female slaves. They will take captive those who were their captors and rule over those who oppressed them. When the Lord has given you rest from your pain and turmoil and the hard service with which you were made to serve, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. How the oppressor has ceased, the insolent fury ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of rulers that struck the peoples in wrath with unceasing blows, that ruled the nations in anger with unrelenting persecution. The whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. The cypresses rejoice at you, the cedars of Lebanon saying, since you were laid low, no hewer comes up against us. Sheol beneath us is stirred up to meet you when you come. It rouses the shades to greet you. All who were leaders of the earth, it raises from their thrones all who were kings of the nations. All of them will speak and say to you, You too have become as weak as we. You have become like us. Your pomp is brought down to Sheol, the sound of your harps. Maggots are the bed beneath you, and worms are your covering. How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. How you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to Sheol, to the depths of the pit. Those who see you will stare at you and ponder over you. Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world like a desert and overthrew its cities, who did not let his prisoners go home? 
All the kings of the nations light in glory, each in his own tomb. But you are cast out away from your sepulcher, like a loathed, untimely birth, clothed with the slain, those pierced by the sword, who go down to the stones of the pit, like a dead body trodden underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial, because you have destroyed your land, you have slain your people. May the descendants of evildoers never more be named. Prepare slaughter for his sons because of the guilt of their fathers, lest they rise and possess the earth, and fill the face of the world with cities. I will rise up against them, says the Lord of hosts, and will cut off from Babylon name and remnant, offspring and posterity, says the Lord. And I will make it a possession of the hedgehog, and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the broom of destruction, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, as I have planned, so shall it be, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains trample him underfoot, and his yoke shall depart from them, and his burden from their shoulder. This is the purpose that is purposed concerning the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out over all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purposed, and who will annul it? His hand is stretched out, and who will turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died, came this oracle. Rejoice not, O Felicitia, all of you, that the rod which struck you is broken. For from the serpent's root will come forth an adder, and its fruit will be a flying serpent. And the firstborn of the poor will feed, and the needy lie down in safety. But I will kill your root with famine, and your remnant I will slay. Wail, O gate, cry, O city, melt in fear, O Philistia, all of you. For smoke comes out of the north, and there is no straggler in its ranks. What will one answer the messengers of the nation? The Lord has founded Zion, and in her the afflicted of his people find refuge. Who is like the wise man, and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the hardness of his countenance is changed. Keep the king's command, and because of your sacred oath, be not dismayed. Go from his presence. Do not delay when the matter is unpleasant, for he does whatever he pleases. For the word of the king is supreme, and who may say to him, What are you doing? He who obeys a command will meet no harm, and the mind of a wise man will know the time and way. For every matter has its time and way, although man's trouble lies heavy upon him. For he does not know what is to be, for who can tell him how it will be? No man has power to retain the spirit or authority over the day of death. There is no discharge from war, nor will wickedness deliver those who are given to it. All this I observed while applying my mind to all that is done under the sun, while man lords it over man to his hurt. Then I saw the wicked buried. They used to go in and out of the holy place, and were praised in the city where they had done such things. This also is vanity, because sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily. The heart of the sons of men is fully set to do evil. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times and prolongs his life, yet I know that it will be well with those who fear God, because they fear before him. But it will not be well with the wicked, neither will he prolong his days like a shadow, because he does not fear before God. There is a vanity which takes place on earth, that there are righteous men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked, and there are wicked men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity, and I commend enjoyment, for man has no good thinking under the sun but to eat and drink and enjoy himself, for this will go with him in his toil through the days of life, which God gives him under the sun. When I applied my mind to know wisdom, and to see the business that is done on earth, how neither day nor night one's eyes see sleep, then I saw all the work of God, that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. However much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out. Even though a wise man claims to know, he cannot find it out. I want you to know, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same supernatural food, and all drank the same supernatural drink. For they drank from the supernatural rock, which followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things are warnings for us, not to desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters, as some of them were. As it is written, 
The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to dance. We must not indulge in immorality, as some of them did, and twenty-three thousand fell in a single day. We must not put the Lord to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them in a warning, but they were written down for our instruction, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your strength, but with the temptation will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. Therefore, my beloved, shun the worship of idols. I speak as to sensible men. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Consider the people of Israel. Are not those who eat the sacrifices partners in the altar? What do I imply then? That food offered to idols is anything, or that an idol is anything? No, I imply that what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be partners with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? We need to admit our powerlessness before God. While we can organize our lives to avoid trouble, poverty, or confusion, no man has power to retain the spirit or authority over the day of death. Our lives are in God's hands, and we do not know the day of our departure from this earth. This powerlessness can make us impatient with God, wishing that he would hurry up and help us, yet we must not put the Lord to the test as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. St. Paul is pointing back to the wilderness generation that complained against Moses in the desert. We must be patient with the Lord's redemptive justice. Sometimes it is delayed until eternity. Appropriately, the Lord is also patient with us. He gives his people a second chance. The Lord will have compassion on Jacob and will again choose Israel, and will set them in their own land. After all their disobedience and covenant breaking, the Lord will remake and reestablish his people. In response to his merciful patience, we should acknowledge our helplessness and dependence on him despise the timeline of his justice. In what way can you surrender your impatience with God and simply trust in his power?